Let's bust some of Raft's most common myths. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. With the release of Chapter 3, a ton of game mechanics and features were both added and changed. So, of course, the internet started spouting theories on the way the game mechanics now work in the game. I have my doubts about a few of them, and there are several I really want to work, so we're going to cover the most common myths that I've seen and rate them as confirmed, plausible, or busted, just like my favorite show from when I was a wee little scientist child. But without further ado, let's dive into busting Chapter 3 myths. First up, you've probably got one of the new recyclers on your raft to make some trash cubes to use in trading, and you may or may not have heard that wool is the best resource to be used in those trash cubes. The recycler has an internal capacity of about 1200 units, and what I've learned is that the lower quality an item is, the less units it gives you to fill in a recycler. Stones are by far the worst item, requiring 50 rocks to make just one trash cube. More common materials like leaves, plastic, and feathers almost have that number with 30 items per cube, but as you get higher in item quality, the fewer of an item you'll need to create a cube. Most of these range from 12-ish to 8-ish items, but there are a select few materials that are hands down definitely better than the others. Smelted forms of metal, so both metal and copper ingots, as well as both bolts and hinges, only require four of each to create a trash cube. Frankly, this is a great way to use up your piles of hinges that you get as you gather loot boxes throughout the game, so no complaints here. But there are exactly two kinds of resources that you only need two items for to create a trash cube. And, as you may have guessed, one of those is indeed wool from llamas. The other is titanium ore, so I think we can guess which is a better bang for your buck. But yeah, this myth is confirmed. Llama wool really is the best resource to put in your recycler. Next is a feature that I'm really hoping works. Supposedly, the higher up a windmill is on your raft, the faster it charges your batteries. I've pretty much only been using the windmill at sea level, so if there's a way to accelerate it, I would definitely be happy. So to test this, I put one windmill at sea level, one at three pillars tall, and one at six pillars tall to see if it made any difference. The windmill at sea level took just about seven minutes to fully charge a fully depleted simple battery. Raising the windmill up just three more levels more than halved that time, clocking out at around two minutes and 23 seconds. But does going up further continue to make a difference? Sadly, not really. The windmill at six pillars high only charged the battery two seconds faster than the one at three pillars did, so this definitely wasn't worth the extra height. So in terms of the myth, it really does make a difference, just not if you go overkill. Going up three walls, and you're good to go. All in all, confirmed. Warning, this myth might be a little bit of a spoiler for anyone who hasn't completed the game yet, so skip ahead for more spoiler-free myths. Next is the myth that Alpha is the toughest boss in the game. Granted, Alpha has the most classic video game boss mechanics with cycles and special attacks and all of that fun stuff, but is he actually the toughest? Well, Alpha only has 500 health compared to Mama Bear with her whopping 750 health. Mama Bear also deals significantly more damage per hit too, and is harder to avoid in my opinion. But the AoE tax and occasional stun from Alpha can be kind of infuriating, and I died several times when I fought Alpha for the first time. So I guess this one kind of depends on an individual skill set and the way you play the game, so I'm going to go with plausible for the idea that Alpha is the hardest boss. As a fun fact, the Rhino Shark only has 40 HP, but it doesn't really matter since you can't kill it in the conventional way anyways. I'm honestly very skeptical about the next one. There's always been some debate about what Raft's best weapon is between the Metal Spear and the Machete, due to the Metal Spear supposedly hitting your target faster. But I'm going to test this and find out once and for all using both the aforementioned Metal Spear and Machete, as well as the Titanium Sword that was just introduced. To make things fair, I spawned Mama Bear with her large health pool in a location that she couldn't get away from to get the absolute best read on damage over time. Turns out, this went pretty much about the way you would assume it would. It took me almost exactly a minute and a half to deal 750 damage with the Metal Spear. The Machete was substantially faster, clocking it at 55 seconds, but the clear winner was of course the Titanium Sword with just 41 seconds to deal the 750 damage. So although the swing on the more advanced weapons might be slightly slower, the increased damage definitely outweighs the speed. So this myth is definitely busted. 
This one I already know the answer to, but I continually get comments about it, so we're going to demonstrate it once again. There's a very common myth in Raft that only one engine will make you go faster. This just flat out isn't true. Your base floating speed in the game is 1.5 meters per second, which you can bring up to an average of 2 meters per second with your first engine. But by adding another engine above what's technically required to get your raft to move, you'll move an additional half a meter per second than you would without the engine. Adding in a third engine doesn't contribute anything, however. You might argue that this is a bit unnecessary, but if you're trying to visit an island 1800 meters away, you're going to get there in 15 minutes with one engine, or 12 minutes with two. So it definitely does make you go faster, hopefully busting this myth once and for all. After I posted my video covering all of the new machines and farming equipment in the game, I got several comments focusing on particular items, so let's break down some of those myths. Starting with the idea that the advanced crop plots give better loot. Frankly, this is busted. I tested growing times and loot drops, and neither plot made any difference. The only difference is in the small and medium crop plots with the amount of plants that they can hold. Second was the idea that the advanced smelter isn't as efficient as normal smelters. The electric smelter takes up two foundations in length and just over one foundation in width, and it can smelt three ores simultaneously. Again, there's no difference in smelt time, so you don't need to think about that. But yeah, you can actually fit four regular smelters in slightly less space, so I guess this myth is technically confirmed. The advantage to the electric smelter is obviously that it's electric, but if you're more concerned with space efficiency, then don't bother making this one. And finally, in this little mini category, was the fact that some people were upset that you can't place the new anchor in an area with a normal wall height ceiling. I found this to be pretty inconsistent, because sometimes I was able to place the anchor when the waves lined up well, which seems a little glitchy, but you could always destroy the ceiling above you, place your anchor the normal way, regardless of the waves, and then rebuild the floor above it with no issues. I think this is something that's likely to get patched in the near future to make this whole process less annoying, but it's busted that you can't fit the new anchor in your normal wall height area. You can, you just gotta get lucky or do it afterwards. One of the weirder myths that I've been seeing is that the diving helmet hat you unlock from the trading posts makes you dive longer. This is probably due to the little tooltip that says that it's somewhat airtight, but let's test it. Without any diving equipment, it took me 1 minute and 2 seconds to drown with full health. With the oxygen bottle, which is the item actually intended to help you stay underwater for longer, it took just under a minute and a half to drown with full health, which is really not as long as I thought it would be. And the moment you've all been waiting for, it took almost exactly a minute and 2 seconds to drown from full health with the diving helmet, exactly matching the speed for swimming with no equipment. So obviously, this myth is definitely busted. Another trading post related myth I saw is that the unlockable advanced scarecrow has an increased effective range over the generic scarecrow. This one is also just flat out busted. Both scarecrows have a set effective range of spherical 6 meters, so everything in the blue zone and beyond is fair game for seagulls in any direction. The only advantage to the advanced one is that it can't be destroyed, so it permanently protects your crops. Next is a minor detail that you may not have noticed unless you played Raft regularly before the update, but it's confirmed that some of the minor textures were changed throughout the game. Walls and foundations themselves are now slightly warmer in color with a more orange hue, and small things like this painting now show all four unlockable characters instead of just Tala and Johnny. So yeah, some textures did change. Also, in the same vein, it's confirmed that the single axis shift glitch was removed. I've used this glitch in several of my builds to evenly split a single foundation by placing a raised platform on an expensive fence, but this sadly no longer works. However, you can still put a raised platform on a pillar, so a double axis shift is still a thing that you can do, making this plausible, I guess. Moving on to one of everybody's favorite new features is the snowmobile. There has been some debate as to whether or not it's possible to get the snowmobile on your raft, so let's test it. If you line up your raft well and slide a snowmobile onto it, you can technically get the vehicle on your raft. You can't drive it once it's there, and it will fall off as soon as you start moving your raft, so this one's kind of in a weird middle ground. It's confirmed that you can get it on your raft, but busted that you can bring it with you, so we're just going to go with a happy medium of plausible on this one. But if there's one myth I can confirm hands down with minimal testing, it's that there is one item in the game that is definitely better than the rest. The mug from Temperance. Painting machine! Paintings! Plants! 
Mug! Just listen to the pure joy. Myth confirmed. Anyways, those are some common myths about Chapter 3 that I've been seeing around the internet recently. Let me know if you've agreed with my conclusions, and if there are any other myths that you want me to test. But that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day. Mm -hmm.